Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our December 16th regular meeting of the Board of Education, our last one of the year. Uh, call the meeting to order. Calendar. Yes. Um, we'll call for you. Mr. Nemoff is absent. Ms. Kalinowski? Here. Mr. Bush? Here. Vice President Darrow? Here. President McCullen? Here. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, first thing we need to do tonight is approve the um, board minutes from our previous meeting. So if I could have a motion or if there's no addition or changes to it, that's the motion. So moved. Mr. Bush, second by Mr. Darrow. Roll call, please. Mr. Bush? Yes. Vice President Darrow? Yes. Ms. Kalinowski? Yes. President McClellan? Yes. And to tonight's agenda, any addition or subtraction? We have a correction, um, Board of Education members. Under the personnel section, number eight, letter A, number one, Cassidy Fawcett has declined employment with the school district, so she's being removed for approval this evening. Uh, with that, Correction to the agenda. Could I have a motion for approval, please? So moved. Mr. Darrow, Ms. Kalinowski. Roll call, please. Vice President Darrow. Yes. Ms. Kalinowski. Yes. Mr. Bush. Yes. President McClellan. Yes. Superintendent Weiss, Mr. Sawyers. Thank you, President McClellan. Um, just a couple things this evening. Um, first, as we prepare for winter recess, last day of school is Friday. Um, it is exam week at the high school. Exams will begin on Wednesday. Um, so we wish our students extremely well as they finish the first semester um, to return in January. Um, winter recess ends. We've actually received a few phone calls asking when school starts again. Um, school starts on Monday, January 6th. That is the return from winter break. Um, in addition to that, um, this week, um, actually over the weekend, we received access and Mrs. Smith is in the audience. Um, I, Mrs. Unger was unable to attend tonight. I um, want to congratulate um, the third graders on our fall um, assessment for the Ohio State required test for the OST. 74% um, of our third graders have already, already achieved the end of year requirement um, for the third grade reading guarantee. Um, it's the highest percentage of passing ever at this early stage of the school year. Um, for the assessment to actually be administered, and actually it has the highest scores. We've introduced um, some writing units specifically for curriculum purposes at the elementary level, and we have seen the highest growth um, in the history of New Albany. Also in this test administration for students that have scored at the advanced level or beyond. 35% um, of the third graders actually scored at that level. So we've had outstanding results to start on um, the third grade. Um, we have rent requirements for the state of Ohio for students that are required to have interventions and out of the students that have yet, and the key word is yet, to achieve the end of year benchmark, um, only five new students were identified that aren't already receiving services or intervention and support at the primary school. So congratulations to Mrs. Smith, our third grade teachers, and honestly K through two. It is not just a third grade teaching test um, for students to take for assessment purposes to demonstrate reading and literacy. Um, it's actually a kindergarten through third grade assessment. So clearly the foundation is there, and congratulations to all of our teachers at the primary school level. Well done, Mr. Hello. Great news. And last, certainly but not least, um, today is Darius, our canine companion, sixth birthday. So we want to say happy birthday to Darius, who is on our school campus every single day with John Hood as Director of Student Services, Safety, and Security. Darius is an important part of our team. So happy birthday, Darius. I've been sleeping through the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking a nap. Um, beyond that, the rest of the um, update we'll do through the program of studies presentation this evening. I will tell you that one of the things that Mr. Freeman is going to talk about in the presentation is the new pathway um, for cybersecurity specifically at the high school. I will also share that this afternoon, the um, Department of Education, when I was at a meeting and probably an hour after I left, um, released the requirements for the Innovative Workforce Incentive Program. The state of Ohio is actually incentivizing schools to try to create pathways for students. Um, the success of this pathway will result in industry-based credentials, and every student that earns a credential will earn $1,250 back to the New Albany Plain Local School District. And 
Eastland Fairfield Career Technical Education Center. And unfortunately, or ironically, depending on what your perspective is, the incentive that we would receive <coughs> to get the industry-based credential is more than the state funding re we receive for any other student in the school district, and we have to apply for the grant to get it. Not that I'm happy about it. <laughs> That's all for now. <laughs> that we don't get our money from the state of Ohio and it's unconstitutional and we lost again because the governor vetoed it despite our legislative action to actually equalize our funding to be to equal to private schools in the state of Ohio, it's still a problem from my perspective as a superintendent. And hopefully yours is Board of Education because in the spring we're going to go back on our campaign to try to equalize minimally funding with the private schools. your point, twice the legislature has passed it. And twice, twice the governor has vetoed it. Once by Governor Kasich, once by Governor DeWine. So there is support, the fight is being continued. Thank you. Thank you. On that happy note, we will move on to uh, our update from police tonight. Ms. Argo. Good evening, Superintendent Sawyer. Good evening, uh, Ms. Jenkins, Ms. Wilson, and Board of Education. Thank you for having us as always. Uh, short and sweet tonight, but I'm so excited to share our first bullet point. Uh, Chrissy Pratt, a third grade teacher, and four of her students, I'm sorry, five of her students, Timothy Gonda, Ellison Goodlett, Anderson Berg, Ava Joyner, and Amri Shakur, were selected to attend the Computer Science Advocacy Day at the State House, where they presented about the importance of computer science for all students as well as computer science activities they were engaged in. Students presented um, for, uh, I'm sorry, uh, students presented for and met with Representative Lightbody and a computer science director, John Weissman, various engineers, computer scientists, and Ohio legislators. I've seen pictures of it. It seemed like it was an incredible day, and everybody there got an amazing experience out of it. So congrats to them. And Lindsay Harrington attended the Ohio Art Education Association's state conference on November 14th and 15th. The conference provided many sessions, including sessions on adapting art for artists with special needs, technology tools for teaching and creating art, curriculum tools for introducing new studio thinking strategies, and she learned about resources on incorporating elements of writing within the art curriculum. So a lot of great professional development on her behalf. Thank you so much. Uh, now for discussion items. Uh, any board liaison reports tonight? Okay, with none, the uh, next discussion item is our organizational meeting date for 2020. And um, I believe that in discussion with uh, those with you guys, and with Superintendent uh, Sawyers, we were talking about Monday, January 5th, so the first day the kids are back. We're back for our organizational meeting. And I believe uh, 6 o'clock will be the start time for that. And then we'll have our organizational meeting President McClellan and members of the Board of Education. Good evening, my name is Kevin Freeman, Assistant Principal at New Albany High School. Tonight I am here to present to you the 
2020-21 program of studies for your consideration. During this presentation, I will highlight changes that have been made to this year's proposed program of studies and provide you with an update on our upcoming registration process. The program of studies serves as a catalog of courses offered at New Albany High School. It contains a full listing of available courses, course descriptions, credit information, and program overviews, all designed to allow our students and families to make informed decisions regarding their classes. Each year, this document is reviewed and courses are updated, added, and removed. This process takes place in collaboration with teachers, administrators, starting in October. The courses are submitted for approval in November, and we collaborate on revisions to the course descriptions in December. The completed document contains course descriptions for over 150 courses and a number of programs. The first section that I will highlight tonight is the registration section. Based on feedback from our students, parents, and administration, this year we are expanding our efforts to prepare students for the registration process. In addition to our annual curriculum night, we'll be conducting two weeks of curricular activities. The desired outcomes of these two weeks is to allow for additional conversation and guidance about the registration process and curriculum options and to better equip students with the information necessary to make the best educational decisions regarding their course selections for the 2000-2021 school year. Beginning on January 21st, 2020, we will release the approved program of studies, registration grid, and the associated forms necessary for registration to the school website. Counselors will also visit all ninth grade humanities classes to discuss transcripts, support resources, and course registration. On January 22nd, we will be holding a general registration information session for rising eighth grade students at the McCoys. During that session, high school counselors will provide an overview of the process and a general introduction to high school. Beginning on January 23rd through the 29th, high school counselors will meet with rising ninth grade students during their study centers to provide a more intimate information session and provide students with the opportunity to ask questions about the registration process. Also at this time, these students will receive a ninth grade only registration grid. We will also have a special panel discussion for middle school students currently enrolled in honors high school level courses. This panel will consist of four current <coughs> freshmen, four upperclassmen, and two high school teachers. Curriculum night will be held on Monday, January 27th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the McCoy Center. The registration window will open for all students to select their courses from, from January the 21st through January 31st. Under the graduation requirements section of the program of studies, we added the updated graduation requirements for New Albany students. To provide more clarity for our students and their families, we have also included infographics of the graduation requirements for the class of 2021 and 22, and for the classes of 2023 and beyond. The information contained in these infographics align with the information that Dr. Hamilton shared with you during your November board meeting. On the screen, you see reflected the infographic that will appear in the program of studies for the class of 21-22, and this one is the infographic for the class of 2023 and beyond. The next section highlighted is graduation honors. In this section of the program of studies, we clarify the variety of ways that students can earn an honors diploma. At New Albany High School, students can pursue honors, honors diplomas for academic, career technical, STEM, the arts, or social sciences and civic engagement. In the Global Scholars section, we updated the level two course for 11th grade students. With this update, we clarify that this course is offered as a blended course and that all work will, complete, will be completed outside of the classroom. The delivery platform has also changed from Blue Quill to Google Classroom. Students are also required to attend four field trips throughout the school year and attend the required follow-up sessions. In the Advanced Placement section of the Program of Studies, we added that registration for the Advanced Placement Assessments now takes place online. The registration process actually takes place in the fall of each school year and has already been completed for this school year. This aligns with changes made by the College Board. 
To play sports at a Division I or Division II college or university, you must graduate from high school and complete 16 NCAA approved core courses. The NCAA core eligibility section, in that section, we were approved for and added the following additional courses to the NCAA approved list. The following courses are currently offered at New Albany High School and have been approved by the NCAA since the program of studies was last approved last year. Physical Geology, which is a Columbus State Community College class, Astronomy, and Zoology. New courses for next year that have already been approved by the NCAA are Ecology, Mandarin Chinese 1A and 1B, and Spanish 1A and 1B. These courses have been updated where they appear throughout the course of study. The following departments have had changes made to the program of studies for the upcoming school year. Business and Technology, English Language Arts, Global Languages, Math, Science, Social Studies, and Eastland Fairfield Career and Technical Schools. In the Business and Technology section of the Program of Studies, we updated the Honors 3 Programming, I'm sorry, the Honors Programming 3 class. We added Introductory Mathematics for Engineering and Applications as a prerequisite and changed the course duration from one year to a semester. Engineering CAD is also a new course that's been added for the upcoming school year. This course introduces students to engineering, design, and build processes, and provides hands-on experience in conventional sketching, drafting, as well as computer-aided design. In the Robotics 2 and 3 courses, there were some changes made to the course descriptions. Topics such as 3D printing, CAD drawing, and fabrication were all removed and placed into the new course called Engineering CAD. Cybersecurity will be coming to New Albany High School next school year. This is an Eastland Fairfield Career Technical School program that will be offered as a new satellite program at New Albany High School. This is a two-year program for 11th and 12th grade students and will allow them to earn industry-based credentials. The program consists of four courses, networking, routing and switching, network management, and network security. This program is pending an articulation agreement between New Albany High School and a higher learning institution. In the English language arts section of the program of studies, changes have been made to the introduction to American studies, Kenyon College, and introduction to American studies, English. For this course, minor changes were made to the wording of the course descriptions and additional course texts were added. Additional topics were also added to the course. A disclosure that sensitive topics will be covered in the class was also added to the course description. For the yearbook course, the description has been modified to include students will now be responsible for page layout, some photography, story writing, and other assignments that are given in the creation of the New Albany Eagle yearbook. In the global language section of the program of studies, we have added new <coughs> courses. Spanish 1A and 1B will be added next year to New Albany High School. These courses will break the traditional year-long Spanish class into a two-year course. Students will earn 0.5 credits for each of these courses. These courses are being offered to better support students who struggle with the pace of the traditional Spanish course. Offering the courses in this manner will allow teachers to provide a stronger foundation for students to build upon once they matriculate to Spanish 2. Mandarin Chinese 1A and 1B will also be new courses added to the program of studies next school year. These courses are being made available to help students build a strong foundation in this language before matriculating to Mandarin Chinese 2 and 3. All of these courses have been approved by the NCAA. In the MAP section of the program of studies, it was updated to reflect that in pre-calculus, we will implement CPM, which is the College <coughs> Math Curriculum, next school year. In the science section of the program of studies, we have made changes to the course description and added new courses, and added a new course. Under the Advanced Placement Chemistry section, for clarity, some of our expectations were added to the course description. For Physical Geology, Columbus State Community College, a correction was made to the length of the course. It was corrected from a year-long course to a semester course. Ecology is a new, class, new course for the upcoming school year. 
This course will allow students to explore biology concepts such as the environment, biomes, climate change, the ecosystem functions, land use issues, hydrology, and species identification. Behavior and interaction using a hands-on, real-life approach. In the social studies section of the program of studies, Introduction to American Studies Kenyon College and Introduction to American Studies English. This is a humanities course, and therefore the same minor changes that were noted in the ELA section are made in the social studies section. Some curricular shifts in ninth grade humanities will be made in order to prepare students to take American history in their sophomore year. As part of the curriculum adjustment to meet the needs of all students, the high school is shifting American history and American government to the 10th grade and 11th grade. No changes are needed in the program of studies until 2021 and 2022 school year. In the Eastland Fairfield Career Technical School section of the program of studies, the Eastland Fairfield section has been updated to reflect the available satellite, I'm sorry, to, to reflect the additional satellite location at Canal Winchester, bringing your satellite total location to six. And cybersecurity will be an additional satellite program at New Albany High School. In the cybersecurity section, we added information about the cybersecurity program, and we want to emphasize that cybersecurity has already been offered at Fairfield and will be an additional offering as a satellite program at New Albany High School next school year. Fairfield, Eastland Fairfield has also added fashion merchandising and aviation to their program offering. That represents the changes and updates made to the program of studies for the upcoming school year. We believe that these updates will help us continue to achieve the best academic and developmental outcome for each student. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Um, a couple of questions. Um, you talked about the world languages in Mandarin and um, or Spanish, 1A, 1B. Um, if the idea there is that's good for students, is there a reason why it wasn't added for French? Well, right now we, we've had a, we definitely had a need um, in Spanish students. We haven't had a need for students in the French classes. That has, hasn't come up as a need for those students, but in Spanish we definitely had that need um, to offer that for students. And again, the majority of our students that come to the high school can do well in the Spanish one, but we do have some students that have struggled and we want to make sure that we support them, given that firm foundation as they move forward. Um, I was just uh, last, well, earlier this week? Last week. But it's getting a week now. Uh, time's the same. Yeah. It's the holidays. So last week, um, uh, I was at the college, um, what, what was the yeah. title of that event? Um, and um, there was a, a discussion with the college um, admissions officers about classes that students here take, um, opportunities to get into the selective colleges. One of the topics that came up was the whole idea of AP courses and what's available and how kids are taking advantage of that in terms of getting them access to college. But um, so let's just say that there's students that are wanting to take AP students at New Albany required to take the AP exam if they are taking AP classes at home? We strongly urge that. We, we actually present to them, yes, we need to take the, we need you to take the AP test. The students can opt out. Um, so far this year, we had about five students opt out. It was a really low number of students that actually opted out of the exam, and so the majority of them are taking the AP test. Five so, out of how many, sorry? Uh, five out of how many? Um, wow, well, I forgot the exact number. Was it? Ballpark score. I know we're giving over a thousand assessments. I think we're giving one thousand and seventeen assessments this year, and so five students. Okay, so that's, that's, that's about five hundred kids taking that. I think that's insignificant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's good to know. Yeah. Um, AP tests come with a cost, though, right? What is the cost for an AP test? We are charging ninety-four dollars per assessment. And then just to reiterate, I know there's only five of them, but they're strongly encouraged to take the test if they're taking an AP class. Yes, one of the changes this year with the college board is 
one and this has actually helped a lot is they moved the registration process <coughs> to the fall and so that way kids this is before they really even got into the class and so kids are, are registering early they're paying earlier and so it causes them to commit to taking the assessment and so that's been a, a helpful change this year and already we've seen that more of our kids are sticking up to decide to take the test than last year So, Board of Education members, just before we get into the actual agenda um, for action items, I want to make two comments. First is in reference to the articulation agreements that Mr. Freeman um, referenced during his presentation. So, the cybersecurity program is an Eastland Fairfield program through career technical education. It would be a satellite program housed in New Albany High School. The teacher pending sufficient student enrollment and verification of the articulation agreements will come forward in January will be hired by Eastland Fairfield in direct cooperation with the school district. So career technical education funding follows the program. So that's the purpose of actually having the partnership with Eastland Fairfield. Um, it will actually permit the exposure for the school district in relationship to the personnel costs associated to it um, because CTE funding will follow that program. Um, the articulation agreement, and this is why we're still working through it, also has a configuration that we're trying to put in place at Franklin University to provide opportunities for seniors in addition to juniors. The traditional cybersecurity program is a two-year program. It's a career technical education program for juniors and seniors. However, Franklin University also has an option that we think would be beneficial for seniors that are interested in information technology, specifically cybersecurity, um, in the future to try to determine how to get them access to the four courses that are being offered specifically at New Albany High School for CTE. So they're networking, routing, and switching, network management, network security specifically, and how those can transfer into institutions of higher education. So we're working through those details, but in the program of study that you're actually being recommended to approve this evening, it clearly states that pending sufficient enrollment and pending successful articulation agreements being adopted by the board in January, that then this program would come online for kids. So there is a caveat that's actually in the wording that we put into the program of studies for the action items. The last thing I want to talk about that Mr. Freeman spoke about, and um, I want to commend the high school social studies department and the high school administration. There has been a conversation in the Albany High School for at least three years about the social studies progression and access to the U.S. government exam that's required for graduation. Um, it has been a senior only class historically at New Albany High School, which has proved challenging for some of our students um, that have difficulty on the state requirements to earn the 18 points that were necessary for graduation. Um, the high school social studies teachers, as well as high school administration working with Dr. Hamilton, um, have changed that progression based upon what Mr. Freeman alluded to during the presentation, and now um, they will have access to government um, as early as their junior year. So it's actually very good for kids. Um, not all kids needed it, but if there's one student that cannot graduate from New Albany High School because of the government requirement, this gives every kid an opportunity. So I commend the social studies teachers from New Albany High School, the high school administration, and Dr. Hamilton for resolving this for our kids for the future. And um, I do have that information for you. There's exactly five students that aren't taking that test next year, and my screen just died on me. <laughs> But it's 541 students are total who are taking AP assessment and they're taking 1,058 tests. How many did you? We have multiple kids and multiple faculty. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, oh, sorry, just out of curiosity, the, the ecology class is a new class. Is that something that was, did you have a number of students that were interested in doing that or was it something that the teachers, the staff, staff wanted to offer that course and so we won't know how many people want to take it until we do the actual registration? And then we'll have to see. Okay. The goal is to encourage students to have a third or fourth year science course that would follow biology um, for students that might struggle in the science area and aren't ready for physics. So we try to create opportunities based upon the needs of those students um, seeking that requirement, um, but not yet taking physics, which is typically the path that they are following. So this would give them another year to prepare before they potentially hit physics. Um, so with the, um, I love that we're offering more um, tech 
technical options for students. Um, how do they, when do they declare that they want to go into some of these things? And um, how do we work out this course load versus, like is it electives um, or do they go, go a whole separate path? So the intent is to create career pathways at New Albany High School similar to career technical education um, satellite programs, in this case would be some fair field. So it's a junior senior program, you're committing to a half day that you actually will spend in cybersecurity, and the other half of your day will actually be in core academic classes still at New Albany High School. Although that's presently available at the Fairfield campus, our students in New Albany High School do not participate because it's an hour and 15 minutes from New Albany to the Fairfield campus, and you really have to give up your New Albany experience. You really go to Fairfield if you're going to do it, you have to be at Fairfield all day and take math, language, arts, science, and social studies at Fairfield as well, because the travel time will prohibit you from successfully fulfilling all those requirements for graduation. We're pushing to offer more of those pathways on the school campus. This is the first of many conversations. Um, there's a medical something that's currently in the works with another institution of higher education that we're actively pursuing for the 2021-22 school year. Um, so hopefully that will come to be for articulation purposes as well. Um, for, again, students at New Albany High School, but it'll be a satellite program, hopefully, of um, Eastland Fairfield again, so that we actually receive career technical education funding for it, in lieu of just general revenue funding that we would be required to pay for hosting our own program. So we're trying to do those articulated agreements, but the intent of cybersecurity is current sophomores will have an opportunity to be invited. There will be a cybersecurity meeting prior to the registration process, um, that we're working on with those articulation partners. So the Institution of Higher Education, in this case Franklin University, hopefully, as well as Eastland Fairfield, will meet with sophomore parents and students um, in a special, probably, evening session to explain to them what that pathway can be because there are 25 seats available. Oh. Um, it is a limited number of seats. So it is one cybersecurity program to start with. It will take 25 students. In the event, for some reason, we can't fill the 25 seats, we would um, offer seats to an adjacent school district as part of the articulation agreement that most likely will put in place in January. However, I am confident that our students will probably be oversubscribed, which will then lead to the same selection criteria process that Eastman Fairfield has today, because all of their courses are limited to 25 students maximum per section, with the exception of a few lab classes on the medical side, it can't exceed 20 students in that class. So um, we will follow the same um, enrollment procedures that Eastland Fairfield actually has and explain that to our current sophomores. The one exception to that is we're still trying to find our current juniors an option that will be seniors next year to give them something directly through Franklin University that would be online. So it will not be a two-year program. For seniors, it could be a one-year program online that could accelerate their pathway um, to another institution of higher education, even beyond Franklin University, if they would so choose. But we will have parent information nights early in January prior to registration based upon the conversations currently with Eastman Fairfield and Franklin. And the factory merchandising and aviation programs work similar? Those are part of actually the Eastland Fairfield campus, so those will not be here, but those are now available, but those will be specifically at Eastland Fairfield. So aviation is actually going to be in a new um, center on the back side of Eastland. It's a brand new building um, that will be available in August, but that actually is only 45 minutes max for our kids. So that one potentially, we might have students actually be interested in going but they are actually recruiting current sophomores because that is a two-year program. So they would be there for their junior and senior year half day. Are there details on what that aviation program is? We can get them. It's exciting. It is exciting. But unfortunately, as exciting as that is, when you look at workforce development and everything that's happening within the state of Ohio, students at New Albany High School do not typically go to Eastland Fairfield. Um, we have six to seven students out of potentially 800 that represent juniors and seniors, just using round numbers, that would choose to go to the CT path because they do not want to leave New Albany High School. So we 
have to change the face of CTE um, for career technical education and give kids access differently, which I think can happen here for the future development of what we're looking for for CTE satellite programs, youth internships, and youth apprenticeships to redefine the high school day. Um, specifically, based upon the work that Mrs. Lofton, Mr. Kramer, and Dr. Hamilton and I are doing in cooperation with the other high school administrators. Maybe if we can find a piece of land outside of this somewhere for an airstrip. <laughs> Maybe it's expensive. I don't know that we're going to do it. <laughs> I'm not a certified flight instructor. Yeah, it's expensive. It's expensive. Um, I can do networking labs. I can't build an airport. There's a really big airport, 15 minutes from here. Long runway, control tower. The um, advanced manufacturing, we could talk, because that's another pathway that there's a lot of money for available from to the state right now. But that's not one that has been on our radar in conversations with kids. We've talked to kids. Um, specifically at the high school. They're interested in cybersecurity, information technology, cloud networking. Those are probably the top three on the techie side. Then on the medical side, they're interested in um, LPN, which is something that Eastland is very interested in. They do not have an LPN program. So I'm pushing pretty hard that we become that satellite for LPN. And then there's a new opportunity that we're pursuing related to ophthalmology based upon a partnership with another third party higher education institution that's building a very large facility in our proximity. Good news. Uh, I have a question about the, uh, just for clarification, the government department. So what, which is, which class is the class that's required? Actually, there's more than one requirement. Most of them are required. Yeah. You have to have American history, U.S. American history, and government. Yeah. government. Government, government historically has been offered in the senior year. Right. Okay. So, what is the what's the progression that the students are going to have to take starting in ninth grade to make that happen? Dr. Hamilton, Mr. Freeman, Mr. Kramer. Well, we'd be doing humanities at ninth grade still. Start with microphone. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Microphone. Sorry. TV land can't hear you. I know. Sorry. Cool. So we would be offering uh, humanities at the ninth grade level as we do now and take a double block course with English and social studies. And the social studies um, really isn't a defined program as such, so it's not a world history, it's not, it just goes with the humanities um, course. And then in 10th grade, uh, students would be taking American history or U.S. history. And then in 11th grade, they would, they would take the government. And then in 12th grade, we're going to move the world history requirement to 12th grade. They could also possibly take a couple of uh, social studies classes and we could offer some electives as well that might be different in 12th grade. Um, we used to have a comparative uh, political science type of class that they might be able to offer or an AP world history type of class. So we could offer some different. So for students that are kind of halfway through right now, what is the plan for them? Well, we have an implementation plan so that it's phased in. So it'll be phased in. Okay. So current freshmen, this is their this is their reality. So sophomore juniors will phase in or get access based upon what courses they're already taking. Okay. But they will take they have to they take have American to take. history and they have to take government. Yeah. And Ken wants to say something. The the current freshmen at the high school, nothing will change with them. So this has to come, this starts with our eighth graders, so class of 2024 coming into ninth grade for next year. So all the current students at the high school will experience humanities, world history, American history, American government. It's a three year phase of process. Okay. Thank you. Just one follow up question on uh, Branch of Freeman, but thank you. Um, as I look at the smog over Shanghai here, John asked about the ecology course, the Global Scholars Diploma. Could you just refresh me on what what that will entail and when that kicks in? Guess I'm coming back. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. So, uh, so we have a program now called the Global Scholars Diploma Program, and we have um, probably thinking 25 maybe, 25 students involved. 
And uh, right now, it's uh, they're just in the first level of the program. As from the slide that you saw, there's there are three levels, and or three tiers, and so they're in the first level. And right now, they're participating in um, four different field trip type types of activities, dealing with uh, cultural awareness and careers and and that kind of thing. So um, so they're doing that, and then. Um, so then in the second year, they'll take this uh, online course that again, and there are also some field trips associated with that. And then in their senior year, uh, or the third year, sorry, the program, they may, may or may not be seniors, uh, could be some juniors, they will do a take action uh, program. So it's kind of like a capstone type of thing. And so um, what we're hoping is there, there's a difference between this Global Scholars Diploma program that we're offering and the global, um, the civic, social studies and civic engagement honors diploma. But, but what they're doing for global scholars program, diploma program, can lead to that honors diploma. And that's what we're hoping students will, will do, they'll participate. And there are some requirements there in terms of specific uh, courses they have to take and uh, there's a portfolio and there's a field experience and there are all kinds of requirements for that honors diploma. So the Global Scholars Diploma Program is a little different then, but it can lead to that diploma, that honors diploma. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. 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 the, the 25 you mentioned, that's our current first year? Type yes, and yes. Year. this is our first year for the program. So they're so all the first, first year. First year type of yeah, yeah we, we offered it to, to sophomores. So we, we wanted a sophomore, junior, senior program rather than, and so we recruit freshmen so that when they're sophomores then they get they enroll in the program. And it's going, it's very successful, going really well. Global Scholars is governed by the Columbus Council of World Affairs. So it's actually done in articulation with the Columbus Council of World Affairs <coughs> and other school districts throughout Central Ohio. Um, it is rigorous. Um, that's why the capstone that Dr. Hamilton referred to actually replaced the senior seminar um, for the requirements. That's actually a requirement. So. Um, but the Columbus Council of World Affairs is a rigorous program to actually earn that, and it is separate from the honors diploma. But it could lead to it. It could lead to an honors diploma, but it is a separate designation yes. for SEAL purposes that's recognized um, if you actually earn the Global Scholar Diploma recognition. But it's not one of the SEALs. It is not an official SEAL. It's not one of the official the graduation office. SEALs that we talked about last time. And um, what's the criteria to get into the program? For the students, yes. Application, interest, it really comes down to interest. Yep. Um, if they're willing to do the work, and they have an interest in learning about different cultures and cultural awareness and that kind of thing. So the, the take action that they do in their third year, can you describe a little more detail, like what that? Well, that they would pick a, a topic or a or a project. It's, ba it's basically it's like a senior seminar project. They Would it be a senior seminar project? We're we're hoping that when we get to that point, that it will be uh, counted as a senior seminar project. Yes, we have to finesse a couple of the requirements, uh, which we're working on. But yes, we're we're very. I, I think that will definitely happen. But it's not pre-loaded. Yes. Not yes. I will send you some additional information for your email. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the next item on the agenda is board policy. Um, board of Education members, the policies presented this evening on the agenda are appearing for the second reading. Um, we discussed these at your last Board of Education meeting. It seems like it's been a while, but they are the same policies that we previously presented. I'm happy to answer any questions you have about any of them. Our last meeting. Um, we have a first opportunity for public participation. No one has signed up, so we will move on to treasurer's items for the financial report, uh, report this month. Uh, I have a, uh, a motion, please. So moved. Second. So we are running, um, as we've discussed in previous months, except two items that I would like to point out, and that was a um, receipt of $584,945 under general property tax, a real estate tax. That is a PIF payment that we received from the city of New Albany. If you remember last year, we received about a $1.2 million payment because
because um, a TIF hadn't been filed correctly, they are going to go ahead and continue making that payment from the city instead of the county auditor. So we are, we will, um, and we know that this is approximately the amount that we're now receiving, and we will work that into the five-year forecast now that we know that. Um, the other item is $147,719 receipt under all other financial sources that I wanted to make you aware of. That is actually a refund from the Franklin County Auditor's Office for the fees that they charge to collect real estate taxes. They've had an excess and they have returned that, um, a portion of that to us. And from what I understand, the Franklin County Auditor is hoping to make that an annual um, refund. I'm not sure how that'll work or why he thinks that would be annual. Normally you can't on those, but um, we'll see how that goes and work that in as well. Otherwise, everything else is running pretty closely to where we were last month. Good questions. Ms. Kalinowski? Yes. Mr. Nemov? Yes. Mr. Bush? Yes. Vice President Darrow? Yes. President McCullen? Yes. Now to superintendent's items. I'd like a motion, please, on superintendent's items A through D with that one change of uh, removing one name on uh, A1. So moved. Second by Mr. Kalinowski, second by Mr. Bush. Mr. Sawyers. Thank you, President McCollin, Board of Education members. Um, the personnel section includes standard employee action items required by the negotiated agreements with the Plain Local Education Association, OP Local 303, or pursuant to higher revised code. Um, letter B this evening for general business includes um, the major item of incorporating cybersecurity as a new course offering for 2020-2021, as I had indicated during the um, prior commentary related to program studies, as well as the approval of the program of studies for release to students and their families beginning in January. Letter C this evening, as always, we're very grateful for the generosity of our community and the donations that we receive as a school district to benefit our students directly. Um, most of them this month include donations to high school robotics. Um, they've been actively seeking community support, um, as well as the Eagle Scout project for um, a deck that was put into the wetland. And then lastly, letter D to see the Board of Education Policy for motion to approve based upon conclusion of the second reading this evening. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Kalinowski? Yes. Mr. Bush? Yes. Mr. Newmark? Yes. Vice President Darrow? Yes. President McClellan? Yes. Our second opportunity for public participation has arrived, and we still don't have anyone, so I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Mr. Darrow? Second. Mr. Newmark? Roll call, please. Vice President Darrow? Yes. Mr. Newmark? Yes. Ms. Kalinowski? Yes. Mr. Bush? Yes. President McClellan? Yes. We are adjourned. Our next meeting is Monday, January 6th. I think we should have